Okay, uh, so we are working on, uh, we just finished um, the properties of squares. Now you're supposed to be looking at the properties of the rectangle. So it tells you here to draw a rectangle with two diagonals. So a rectangle, you're going to make a long side and then a short side, length and a width, right? And then the diagonals go from the opposite vertices, right? Cross each other in the middle. It says label the vertices in the intersection of the two diagonals and list all of the properties you know to be true. Now, this took us a while to list all of the properties that you know to be true. Uh, I really want you to make sure you do your best to list everything that you can figure out must be true, okay? I want you to try to figure these out for yourself. So here we go. We're drawing a rectangle. Ooh, I am not real good at drawing it, am I? But if it's a rectangle, then we're thinking right angles. Right, rectangle, right angle. Okay, and what do we know about a rectangle? Well, we know that these are all right angles. And what do we learn? If two, two lines are perpendicular to the same line, they're parallel to each other, right? So these are parallel. These sides are parallel. And then the same thing is true for the other sides, right? They are also parallel to each other. So we have a rectangle is a parallelogram. That's one thing we know. All right here we have A. Here we have B. We also know that all four corners, or not corners, angles, all four angles are congruent, right? We have four congruent angles because they're all right angles. Okay, what about these diagonals? Hmm. Well, this one divides the triangle into two congruent parts. I just want you to think for a minute. If these two lines are parallel, then the distance between them on a perpendicular has to be equal. So therefore, this side, whatever length this is, has to be the same as that side, right? And this side, whatever length this is, has to be the same as that side, right? So, and then the diagonal, we have triangles here, right? And the diagonal in the middle is congruent to itself. So what is that telling me? Well, that's telling me that I have two congruent triangles. Does that mean that these two angles are divided equally? I don't think so. Okay, I'm going to give a really good example, and I want you to look really closely at it. But, but whatever we decide is true for these two, we know these angles are congruent, we know these sides are congruent, we know these sides are congruent. We know this angle here and this angle here, these are alternate interior angles of See if these parallel lines, and this is a transversal. So by alternate interior angles, these angles have to be congruent, right? And um, then, uh, let's see, what else do we know? Well, we know um, these on the outside, this one over here, and this one over here. Well, they're alternate interior angles of these lines, because we have a transversal of these parallel lines, and these are alternate interiors of those two lines. So the the angles are di divided in a way that they're not they're not bisected but they create congruent angles on opposite sides of each other right they so they divide the angles in a way that is congruent right and then of course we could draw ourselves the other diagonal right the other diagonal would be like this right so what do we know about these triangles here well this diagonal is doing the same thing Hey, wait a minute. This angle and this side and this side. Wait, if I go, hold on just a minute. Let's just check this out. I got triangle ABC. This side and this angle and this side, right, are the same as triangle BDC or BCD, rather, BCD. So I have ADC and BCD. Well, this one we said this side here has to match that one, right? This side is congruent to itself, and this right angle here, B, C, D, that's a right angle. That has to also be congruent to this right angle. So these two triangles are congruent to each other, which means the diagonals have to be congruent to each other. So in a, in a rectangle, the diagonals have to be congruent to each other. Huh. All right. Well, let's just, let's look in GeoGebra at this a little bit. Okay, you can do this on your on your um, calculator, but let's just, oops, let's check out GeoGebra. So if I were to construct, to start by making a, um, this is a rigid polygon. Um, I don't want to do that. I'm going to start by just making a segment. So I'm going to my line, here is a segment. 
Okay, oops. Let's go with the segment of given length. So I'm going to select a point. All right, why am I not able to do this? Let me change my view, perspectives, and geometry, right? And I'm going to use the segment with given length. Select the point. Aha, and there's the length. Okay, so I'll go with six units long. All right, now I'm going to construct a perpendicular. So here is a perpendicular. It's going to be perpendicular to that line, go through that point. I'm going to place another point on the object, right? So let's place another point there. And then what do I want to do? Well, I'll make another perpendicular here. So let's go with another perpendicular, right? Perpendicular that goes from here to here. And then I want another perpendicular that's perpendicular to here to there. And I want to find where these two meet. So I forced a perpendicular line, a perpendicular line, a perpendicular line. And that means 90, 90, 90. And these two are going to have to, these two lines are parallel, right? So they've got to each be, because they're both perpendicular. And these two lines are parallel. They're both perpendicular. So this has to be a 90 degree angle as well. And we're going to find the intersection point. So let me get here to the intersection point of these two. And then I can now, I can draw my polygon, which is going to be my rectangle. This is kind of like a little rectangle machine, right? And now that I've got my rectangle machine, I'm going to draw my diagonals. So let's go with, um, sorry, uh, these segments here. So I go from this corner to that corner, right? And then from this corner to that corner. Those are my diagonals. And now let's measure those diagonals. Let's measure the length of this diagonal over here and of this diagonal over there and we'll just move those so we can see yeah they're both at 6.32 all right so but remember we said these angles have to measure the same the opposite angles on the opposite sides of those diagonals but you know, i want you to really look here if i change the shape so now does that mean this angle and that angle are the same absolutely not right if it turned into a square well, a square we would know a lot of things about because we just finished studying them. But if this was a square, then these would all be right angles. So that can't be a square. We had to open it up even more. That that might be getting pretty close to a square there. I don't know. Something like that, right? Anyway, uh, then we'd have all right angles and everything in the opposite. And the diagonals would be perpendicular bisectors to each other. And these would bisect. Each diagonal would bisect each angle. But as I bring it down and make it more extreme like that, you can see that the angles are no longer bisected. This angle in here is not congruent to that angle right there, right? It's just not. And that's just looking at them a little bit. Use RE to construct rectangle RECT. So you would want to construct it the way I did right here, right? Start with the length of RE, make a perpendicular, make another perpendicular, make another perpendicular and where those perpendiculars meet that'd be your fourth point you'd end up with that um, and then that would be uh, intersection would be a so this would be like r e c t and the intersection would be a here okay and now they want us to do some proof so they want us to prove that r triangle r c t is congruent to triangle e T C. Alright, and what, what we we've, we've kind of already talked our way through this, but we're gonna do this. I'm gonna help you get this done. Here we go. So R C T, which is this triangle, has to be proven somehow that it is congruent to triangle um what was it? E T C was it E E T C. I'm going to prove those two triangles are congruent to each other. All right, so what do we have? Well, all we know is that it is a rectangle. So if we know that it's a rectangle, what do we know? Well, we know a lot of things that we've kind of already talked through. I'm going to mark some stuff here. You know, this angle here, 
and this angle here are congruent. So we have an angle. They're both right angles, rectangles, both right angles. We know this side is congruent to that side. We know this side is congruent to itself. So we have side, angle, side. So the two triangles have to be congruent to each other. Okay. Um, hmm, anything else we need to know here? I can't think right now. I think we're good. All right, let's move on. You can write that up as a two-column proof. Do you have an inf enough information to conclude that RT is congruent to EC? Yeah, because once we've proven, right, um, oh, that RT is congruent to EC. Aha! Do we have enough information? Yeah, we do because this is a rectangle, so we know these are parallel lines, and the definition of a parallel line is that they are equidistant, right? I and mean, we know they are equidistant, so we are measure the equidistant on a perpendicular. These are both perpendiculars, so we can make the argument, since we're measuring the distance between parallel lines on perpendiculars, that distance doesn't change, right? And so therefore this length and this length have to be the same. So we could explain our reasoning on that. And how can we prove the second pair of opposite sides of the rectangle are congruent? So well, we know this side and this side are congruent by the same reasoning. These two lines are parallel because they're both perpendicular to, the, say, this side here. So with parallel lines, we measure the distance between parallel lines on the perpendicular. These are both perpendiculars. The distance can't be changing or it wouldn't be parallel, right? It would have to be parallel, right? or it have to be equidistant. So RE must be congruent to TC, right? using the same logic, right? Do we have enough information to conclude that it is a parallelogram? Yes, that's what we just did. Since these sides are opposite and those sides are opposite, that is the definition. Oh, sorry. Since the opposite sides, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other, that is the definition of a parallelogram. Okay. Do we have enough information to conclude the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent? Yes. Once we prove those triangles, what they ask us to do is prove these triangles are congruent here and here. Well, then these corresponding parts, RC and ET, they have to be congruent to each other by CPCTC, right? So you have to explain that, right? Now, um, do we have enough information to conclude the diagonals of a, ah, of, a, of a rectangle bisect each other? All right, so how are we going to prove that the diagonals here bisect each other? Well, what we know is we know that we ended up with, you know, some different, we ended up with some different triangles. We got a bunch of different triangles in here. But let's, let's consider for a moment a few different things, okay? We know that, um, let's go through this together. Let's get some, let's we'll start. This diagonal right here, okay? This is a transversal of these parallel lines, right? And we know, by the way, we know this side is congruent to this side, right? We know this side is congruent to this side. And because this is a transversal, then this angle here is an alternate interior angle to this one here. So we have this angle matches this angle, right? So these opposite angles are the ones that match each other. What else do we know? Well, we know these vertical angles are also congruent, right? So we have this angle and that angle. So now this triangle, EAC, has to be congruent to this triangle, TAR, because of angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. And therefore, the two triangles are congruent to each other. That means that their parts must be congruent, the corresponding parts, right? So that means this side and this side are congruent. Okay, better make two marks here because they're different from that side over here. But these two are congruent to each other. So that means we have bisected, this RC must have bisected ET. And by the same token, these parts here, I'll put three marks here. This and this, they must correspond, right? I mean, they correspond, so they must be congruent to each other. So these diagonals must also be congruent, right? They must also be congruent. Something funny else I know, right? I mean, now we have two congruent triangles. And if you think about it, we knew these diagonals were congruent to each other. And now their bisected parts are congruent to each other. Which tells me this side and this side actually are congruent to each other. So 
we don't need to have three here. We can use two, right? Because, because this is the same length as that. So now we have an isosceles triangle. So by the base angle theorem, these angles also must match. Oh, my vertical angles are different though, right? So they need two, right? To show that they're different. But these are base angles of isosceles triangles, so they have to be equal to each other. So we ended up with isosceles triangles that are congruent. That's pretty interesting, right? And what do you think would happen if we looked at the other two triangles? Couldn't we use all the exact same logic the other way? The answer is absolutely. We have vertical angles. We have alternate interior angles, right? So these two angles, so by angle, angle, and then these sides are also congruent. We use the same exact argument. Now we know that these sides are all equal to each other. So these two triangles are congruent to each other as well. Ooh, that's kind of a lot, right? All right, we'll go down here. Um, all right, so we know some of the things we know now. The diagonals of a rect rectangle are congruent. The diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other. Okay, the resulting triangles are congruent, right? And the result resulting small triangles in created by those bisected diagonals are congruent also. All right here it says Ophelia is making a square mat for a picture frame. How can we make? How can she make sure the mat is a square using only a ruler? Ah, well, what can we do? We can measure all four sides, right? That would tell us that it's at least a rhombus, right? Because if all four sides are congruent, then it's at least a rhombus. But then what else could we do? Well, let's let's take a look at a rhombus for a minute and how it might be different. If it had, imagine this is kind of a funny looking rhombus. The sides are the same, right? But they're all congruent, but it's not a square because it got made funny, right? Like it's leaning or the angles are goofy. We have four congruent sides. So think about, I want you to look at this. I'm going to make these in color. Look at this, look at this diagonal here. How long is this diagonal going to be, right? Look like it's going to be pretty long. What about this one here? Is this one shorter? And the answer is yeah, the more extreme this gets, the diagonals of a rhombus are not going to be congruent to each other. Right? I mean, especially if this starts to lean a lot. Even though the four sides are congruent, does not mean the diagonals are going to be congruent. Yuck. Right? So, let's think just for a minute what we can do with this. Um, well, as if I'm trying to prove it's a square mat, remember that a square mat, let's draw a square mat out. All right. The square mat is different because not only do you have all four sides the same length, but the four angles are also the same. And so as a result, right, it's a square. So as a result, the, sorry, the diagonals are congruent as well, right? So what would I do? I would take my ruler, I would verify that all four side lengths are the same, and then I would measure with my ruler the distance on this blue diagonal and compare it to the distance on this red diagonal. And if those distances are equal, I have a square, right? Because then I know I have congruent diagonals, which would never be the case with a rhombus. Only a special rhombus, right? only a square all right so here we go now it says Gretchen is putting together a bookcase ah bookcase but the bookcase is not a rhombus the bookcase is not a square the bookcase is going to be a rectangle right so it came with some diagonal support bars that are supposed to be screwed into the top and the bottom on the back of the bookcase that's these dotted lines here we're going to screw in these diagonals right here Unfortunately, the instructions were lost, and Gretchen does not have the directions or a measuring tool. Okay, so she has a screwdriver, she has a marker, she has a piece of string. So how can Gretchen attach the supports to make sure the bookcase will be a rectangle and the shelves are parallel to the ground? Aha, okay, well, what are we going to need to do, man? We are going to need to make sure that we have oh I got an idea right what if I screwed the string in here right and then 
I measured the string to one diagonal, back to the other corner, and then back up here. So in this case, maybe I put a screw in here and I kind of wrap it around and I wrap it around and bring it up. But it's one long string here, right? It's one long string. All right, so now what I have to do is I have to find the center of the string. So before I finish tying this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that string in half and I'm going to find the exact center. And then I'll, I will put that string down like this and like this and like this, okay? And then I'm going, I'm going to have to shift it, right? Like shift this. Maybe it obviously looks like it needs to be pushed right now because it's kind of leaning one direction. So I'm going to push it the other way. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking to get that, that middle line right in the center. That'll give me an idea that, that my string here and my string here are congruent, right? Because if I mark the center of the string, if one side is longer than the other, then that center is going to, like say this is the longer side right now, and I think it probably is because it looks like it's longer. So then the center of the string is going to get pushed over here, right? Because this side gets shorter and this side gets longer. So the center is going to get pushed. So I'm looking for when is the center here. And then once the center is there, what I can do is I can use my marker mark, mark again, take it off and check and verify that those lengths here and here are exactly the same. Anyway, whenever I get those two lengths exactly the same, okay, then when I know those two lengths are exactly the same, boom, I know I've got a, um, I know I've got a rectangle, right? Because the diagonals will be congruent. So there you go. How can she make sure that the bookcase is a rectangle and the shelves are parallel to the ground? Okay. And um, so there we have it. That's how I would do it. Okay, now we have a rectangle base, but he's wondering if it's a square base. So what does he already know um, to conclude it has a rectangle base? Well, he knows that they're all right angles if he knows it's a rectangle base, right? He also knows the diagonals are congruent to each other. That's fine. But what does he need to know to conclude it's a square? Well, knowing that the diagonals bisect each other is not enough, but what if we bisected the angles? If we knew we were bisecting the angles too, then it wouldn't be a rectangle, right? It'd probably have to be a square in that case. So check to see if all four angles are being bisected. Also, we could check to see if those diagonals are perpendicular to each other, because with a rectangle, they are not perpendicular, but with a square, they would be, right? So I would... I would get those diagonals drawn out and measure the angle at the intersection of them. And if it's a if it's a right angle, then I know I'm dealing with a square. And that's what Matsuo could do. All right, here we have a LED television. Okay, so we got a TV here. They want us to find the dimensions of the 27-inch LED TV. Well, that's not too hard because we have the opposite. And this is a trig problem here, right? So if I want to find x, I would go the sine of 24 is x over 27, right? Sine opposite over hypotenuse. If I wanted to find y, I would do cosine of 29.4 degrees is y over 27. And then, of course, solve for y. And I could do the same thing with this, right? I mean, if they're going to ask me. A TV screen is measured, always measured in inches from corner to corner on a diagonal, right? So... When they say it's a 27-inch screen, they mean from this part of the screen to that part of the screen. Here to 30 from here to there, diagonally. Okay? That's how they measure TV screens. And you do the same trick for the 30-inch LED TV. You would just use your trig function. So trig, uh, you do sine of 32 equals opposite over hypotenuse. Sine 32 equals x over 30. Cosine of 32 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine 32 equals y over 30. And solve for each one. Okay, now that you know the dimensions, you can compare the viewing area. So, whew, I don't know the answers for x and y, but multiply x times y and find the viewing area. Multiply x times y and find the viewing area. I want you to do that, okay? And then you can compare them and see how much larger would be um, the 30-inch screen than the actual 27-inch screen. 
I think you might be surprised at how much larger it actually is. All right, what property of a rectangle would be helpful when locating the center point of the television? Well, the property I think would be helpful is the fact that the diagonals bisect each other, right? So if I said, all right, here's one diagonal. I know if I went 15 inches down, that's where the other diagonal should hit, right? It would be bisected. So the center should be halfway, because it's going to be bisecting this, should run right through here, and that'd be the other diagonal. So 15 inches here and 13 and a half inches there. That's all I'd need to do to find the center. What property of a rectangle will be helpful in determining the Determining the perimeter of the television screen. Aha! Well, the fact that a rectangle is a parallelogram. So if I know x and I know y, this is also x and this is also y. So the perimeter is equal to 2x, right, plus 2y. 2x's plus 2y's. That will give me the perimeter, and I could do that for either one. Okay, and now we have uh, problem number five. Sketch a square. Label the midpoint of each side of the square. Determine the polygon. Oh, boy. All right. I'm going to have you guys do this, okay? I don't think I'm going to go all the way through this myself, but I think you're going to find it interesting. Actually, I'm not going to do this here. I'll just kind of get you started, okay? But you could use your calculators. I'm going to use GeoGebra. So let me see if I can reload this and start us over again. So if I made a square, now the thing about a square, right, we know that a square is a regular polygon of four sides. So I'm going to, boom, and, I, and I've got four sides, regular polygon, that's a square. And then if I find my midpoint, right, so I'm going to find my midpoint of each side. And then I connect those midpoints, right? into another polygon, this time not a regular, I'm going to just connect these points into their own polygon. The question is, what will that shape be? So I'm going to let you try and figure that out. You can use your measurement tools, right? If you measure the lengths, that'll tell you if it's a rhombus or not. If you measure the angles, that'll tell you whether or not it's a rectangle. And remember, if it's a rhombus and a rectangle, then it would happen to be a square, right? Because it's a special rhombus and a rectangle. Okay, I'll let you kind of figure that out. And if you did it again, what would happen? Okay, so again, you're going to use your midpoint tool, right? And you're going to do the same thing. One to each of the four sides, find the midpoint, and then make another polygon inside. And what are you going to learn about connecting the midpoints of a square? It sure looks like a square, but you got to verify that somehow. Okay? And I'll let you do that. Okay. And that will be the end of Lesson 10-1. And I'm going to get us started on Lesson 10-2.